Man, we've known each other for like six years now, bro. Easy, yeah. Six and it, and it's, been a, it's been a great ride. And I want to thank you for doing this. I decided to do this because um, I really want to showcase people outside of their characters, people as like, you know, actors as people. Because people forget that you guys are human beings. You know what I mean? I know that's right, yeah. Considering so I, I got hair now, that, that, that changes it right there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So thank you very much for joining in on us. Uh, I want to start by, with a question that I ask everybody, and that's how did your mother and your father meet? Oh my gosh, I don't know if I want to go there, man. It's weird. <laughs> I, I, um, uh, my my parents, yeah, you know what? My parents, they're they're very private people. Um, I'll say this: they met when they were both um, teaching at uh, a school on the south side of Chicago at uh, St. Killian's Parish mm -hmm. at 87th and May in um, uh, Auburn Grisham neighborhood on the south side of Chicago. They were both uh, teaching at that school at the time. Okay. That's as much as I could say. That, that's, that's more than <laughs> enough. That's more than enough. So I'm from Jersey, Jersey slash New York. And uh, Brooklyn is a special place. Like Brooklyn is a place where you have MC Light, you have Lil' Kim, Foxy Brown, all of these different personalities. And you're sure. from Chicago. And Chicago yes. is similar to where you have Chief Keith, Kanye, Common, you know, all these different people. How does Chicago shape you, bro? Well, Chicago shaped me. I mean, Chicago hip hop shaped me, really hip hop in general. I always say that there's the KRS one line is rap is something you do, hip hop is something you live. So I was always like, people can't tell me I'm not hip hop because, you know, that, that was that was the culture that raised me in Chicago. And it's funny, you know, when, when you mentioned Common, who I'm a fan of for sure. Um, but uh it was always like when he was kind of not claiming New York, but he wasn't claiming Chicago hard enough. <laughs> but we were all like, damn, come on, Common. And um, but, uh, but you know, Chicago has got a lot of love, you know, it really looks out for its own, that's for sure. Um, uh, I think that just, uh, just you know, it really East Coast rap. I was always so into East Coast rap. There was a, I was a graffiti writer, as you know, for since I was a young, young kid from like 11 years old. I guess that's when you most people start, you know, getting up. Yeah. Um, but there was a, a, a movie uh, by Henry Shelfont called Style Wars. And it was just, you know, it was like that that was our we watched that almost every day from the time I was 13 to the time I was 17, you know, not every day, but you know what I mean? You watch all the time. So there so, so much of the Tommy like vibe is like there's all these dudes like, you know, Min One who's in there. I mean, even shout out to my guy, K Slade does one. Uh, there's all of these lines and, and scene has got like these lines and everywhere they're like, what are these over here? Like they're bitch, little doodads here and there. You know, it's like, and that kind of came out into the Tommy, you know, yeah, act yeah. that, because uh, there's there's this one line that scene says at one point, he's just like, you know, well, it wasn't really never really. And like, I actually say that. That says time. a lot without <laughs> saying nothing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So so it's like, that was a big, huge influence, influential thing uh, to me. And so that was, you know, that, you know, graffiti writing is one of the elements of hip hop. So um, it's, uh, I was going to say, I am hip hop. What, what was your tag name? Oh, I'll keep that on the wraps, too. <laughs> There's like a train in Chicago with your name on them. No, oh, there were. No, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And every yeah. now and again, you, I still get a little little goofy. But like right now, you know, even just painting, I, I hadn't painted in a long time. And um, uh, we went up, uh, my friend uh, Eve Rivera, who's a great uh, director, uh, we went up his, his, some of his old friends, Nicer and Bio. We went up and did the Tats Crew wall and uh, up in the Bronx. And I hadn't painted in a while. And I did, it's on my, it's on my Instagram page. It's this power piece that I did in like a half hour. And like Eve was trying to do this big wild style. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm keeping it simple. I'm doing a straight letter with a three colored fade. <laughs> I got yeah. mine up in a half hour. It started raining. At least mine got done. You know what I mean? But I still, it's still fun to paint. And, I got you wonder what my movie was that I watched all the time. Me and my boy Latif, rest in peace. Yeah. It was, uh, ironically, it was Menace to Society. We watched Very that fun. movie, watched a bootleg copy of that movie. It was clear. It was people talking in the background, but it was our movie, and we watched it every, almost every day until it came on HBO. And when it came on HBO, I recorded it on my VCR. I know that whole <laughs> movie front and back. So when Lorenz came on power, I was like, oh, my dude. Yeah, and I, it, it's so funny too. There was a time, and I think I think I'm probably a little bit older than you, but 
there was a time when dudes the the sucking on the um you know the baba like dudes sucking on that the, the nipple thing like dudes did that like even like <laughs> like skateboard like you know like like tough puerto rican dudes in chicago i remember like dude there's a, a group of skateboarders called jerry's kids that they were uh they were from humble park i think most of them were anyway somebody's gonna come on here and be like you, you're wrong but i'm I, I, anyway but like this one dude like their main leader guy was like had that same thing going on i was always like what the fuck is up with that you know it was a thing yeah and the rest Yo, it off. he did he did you you've been You've been working for a really long time, like on the low, bro. I think what, like 93, 97 was one of your yeah, first I mean, I, I started. I started in theater in Chicago in, um, in eight, 80, 86 or 87. And I've, I've, been, I've been in um, the Screen Actors Guild since 1988. Wow. Uh, so, I'm, yeah, my 30 years came and went, man. I've been, been in it for a long time. So it's, it's been, I never had a whole lot of success, but I always tried. So it's like the, the amount of rejection and the tough skin you have to have. I'm amazed that sometimes when I get bent out of shape, right, I do a real clap back at somebody because I'm like, man, you've been getting your ass handed <laughs> to you for 33 years. Like, you know, take it easy. But, you know, it, it, it never gets easy. It, I think that's one of the reasons why when I play a character, it comes off real is because I give everything into it. You know, it's, I open myself up just to get, um, I get so wound up to get so let down every single time. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a tough career if you're going to do it right. Yeah, I, as a creative, man, I feel you 100% because being a creative, you get work, you don't get work, you get work, you don't get work. And there's a lot of times where you have to just stay afloat. You, I was talking to Sterling K. Brown, and I asked him to, right before he, right when he got This Is Us, Mm -hmm. And uh, it was after the OJ fame. And I said, yo, you've been working for a long time, but like, this is a big moment for you. How do you define success? And he was like, um, by not having to work a side job. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm lucky enough to where I can just act. Um, how did you stay afloat from gig to gig? You work like at least one every year for the most part, but how did you stay afloat? Yeah. Um. It was like my first and kind of only job I ever had after um, after school, after uh, 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 college, um, I, I graduated a little bit early from Columbia College in Chicago. I just packed on the hours. I worked two jobs and I still yeah. managed to write my name on the train every day um, was uh, I was a boxing coach because I was an amateur boxer for a lot of years. And then I just uh, was coaching the young kids when they were going into doing silver gloves when we were training for Golden Gloves. And um, that was only my re one real paid job. After that, I just did odd jobs, um, collected unemployment when I needed to. Uh, otherwise, I was working and hustling. And I never had a plan B. It was always, you know, burn the bridge behind you. And um, I, I, I don't know if that's good or bad or, or what it was, but I, I, I just, it was, for me, I wouldn't wish acting on my worst enemy just because oh, it's, so, it's so difficult. It's such a difficult thing for in your heart. Um, and like I had, I, I developed all these complexes when I was young because I'm auditioning and I'm like 13, 14 years old. And the things, the awful things people think it's okay to say to a kid. I mean, I was a kid, but I never, like, uh, my, I got a, I got had my nose broken when I was, um, first time was when I was like 13. And I got it broken again when I was 15. And it's kind of these sinuses here, you know, it's like I kind of, it's kind of wide on the tops here. And I, I've always had a complex about my nose. Like, you know, I've got a big nose and like, I, and, and like complexes about being ugly and stuff. So like when Tommy, who's a sexy motherfucker, don't get me wrong. Like when people are like, damn, Tommy's so fine and all this and all that, I'm always like, who are they talking about? Like, are they crazy? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it is, there is the dysmorphia factor that you just develop as a person in front of the screen, listening and giving credit to people who are in charge. All these acting teachers who didn't know their asshole from their ear hole, pardon me for that I studied on, you know, with, they're just terrible, like, they're terrible people. And it's hard to define who knows what the hell they're talking about. And what I've, the only thing that I know is that people tell you that when there's a set way to do something, they're, they're, they're the people to watch out for. They're the liars. They, they don't know what they're talking about. So there's no yeah. way, there's no one way. Yeah, that's the thing that's kind of crazy to me too. Cause as you know, I've been starting writing and like, yep. I'm trying to put I'm doing pretty good, but I'm trying to put together all of this stuff, and I'm just like, like a Bible, and, and like, mm -hmm. this stuff. everything's like, there's no format. You can literally do whatever you want, and I'm just like, 
mind boggling at that moment right there. Just like, oh, all this different stuff. But it's so crazy. But um, I, I do want to talk to you also because I, I like the fact that like before you got in acting and while you were acting, and I saw you posted recently a picture of your brother. What was running the streets like? Not running the streets, just hanging out with him back in the day. What was that like for you? My, my little brother who I posted, who I put the picture of in the sibling day, yeah, he's he's a he's a little maniac. He's fun because he's got this kind of like this innocent quality about him. But he was down like he would he would go anywhere in, in, in Chicago more so than me, mainly because I knew those streets better from, you know, when you're a graffiti writer, you know what who's where and what gangs are where. And um, cu gang culture is so influential in any urban subculture. I know, but so, so, so much in Chicago, like graffiti was so. Uh, affected uh, my my buddy Fred one from THC crew in the South Bronx. Uh, we I did his show him and the, my guy Rhino, um, talking about the influence of gangs in Chicago graffiti. Just even like it, th these guys from the New York who came to Chicago, they were always like, why do you guys care about gang culture so much? It's just so ingrained. Just in terms of the structure, like they would be like. Who cares if you write somebody's name backwards like write your name like in new york that was cool look i can write my name backwards but in you know in chicago like that's the diss like you put up another gang but you write their name backwards like you're like you know it'll be like you know something it'd be like you know at ashland vikings here but like you know flipping the harrison gents or something like that so you'd have all of this different stuff and then also all of this different symbolism like in new york you know you everybody was clocking their hat to the left or to the right or it didn't matter with style in chicago you know what i mean you're like yeah. Right is folks, left is people. You didn't want any part of that stuff. So you really, and colors and all that stuff was so incorporated into that kind of a culture that it was, uh, uh, you just had to be smart. You had to have your wits about you and you had to be ready to fight or run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I grew up in Elizabeth, New Jersey, so I had to sort of navigate. It wasn't necessarily gangs. We just had that's like sections. So it was like downtown, midtown, uptown. That's where my wife is from. Each other. Huh? That's where my wife is from. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, New Jersey? I'm, I'm in Elizabeth, New Jersey, pre this pandemic. My mother-in-law still lives there. So I'm on uh, Bayway Avenue, man. I'm hitting up my Bayway Liquors. I got my got my stores yo, here. I live right over there, right over yeah. the Circle. That's where I lived at. Yeah, that's where she's at. Uh, St. Hedwig's is the church that I go to when we go over there. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So you know, I got that's the hood. So like, it's, it, I had to navigate. I had to navigate all of that and figure that out. And you learn something navigating that. Either you get in or you don't get in, or you just sort of like be neutral, but you still have to pay respect and pay homage to where you at. And Chicago was the same, I'm, I'm sure. And the, the big thing is my friend Eric Aviles, who's an actor here, he's actually doing this one-man show about growing up in um, Humble Park, the neighborhood he grew up in. And uh, it, it's called, um, uh, what is it? It's, like, it's two parts, but the main thing that it is, is what you be about. And that's what everybody said in Chicago. Yo, man, what's up? Like, to me, it would always be like, you know, where I, when I was doing graffiti here, like, well, yo, white boy, what you be about? What you, you know, I was like, man, I'm a neutron, just trying to get to the bus. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but, you, but you couldn't be weak about it because then they're like attacked. You'd have to be like, yeah. oh, look, I'm doing this. I'm good. You don't, you know, you don't want any, I'm good, man. Like, you had to show respect, but you couldn't be soft. Right, right. Same, same. I, I know exactly w w what you're talking about. Now, I do want to get into some of the shows because we talked a little bit about Ozark and uh, that experience. Now, people that actually consumed it and got to see it, what has the response been like uh, for, for, for you from the fans of yours and they, your portrayal of Ozark? Well, not because I don't want to give anything away. Uh, so no, without giving spoilers, I'll say that I thought, and you and I talked about this, I thought that it was going to be a lot, um, that the reaction was going to be a lot harsher uh, to me for playing Frank Jr. Um, especially, I mean, people know that I go, go up against Ruth, uh, who's the beloved yeah. character played they by Julia Ruth. Carter. Everybody loves Ruth. And they should, they should. She's fantastic. She's a really sweet person and a good person. And um, I had fun working with her, but my role wasn't very big, uh, but it was important. You know, yeah. you can't always be the main guy or maybe you can, but I, I always, I had never have it. It never wasn't about that to me. Like, I loved the show, so I was happy to be a part of the show, regardless of how the character, you know, whatever happens. But um, uh, I was also just like, I came in with a whole bunch of ideas. And then literally Jason Bateman was just like, no, 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 no. Like, not like no, but like, hey, how about this instead? And I was just like, well, you know, the guy made a hit show. It's his show. Let me, I, I have the ability to do what other people want me to do as well. 
So I yeah. always come in with a ton of ideas, but I never, I'm, I'm never right. I'm just like, hey, I got my ideas. Let's, let's come up with the best thing. And so I think, you know, Bateman helped me come up with the best thing. And the, the character works. It did, it did, it did. She gave you a dope shout out too. And the character of Ruth is a hip hop head. Do you know if Julia is an actual hip hop head? Because I really want to know that. Uh, I, I, we did not talk too much. We're probably from different. I mean, not that I don't keep up, but like, uh, we did. We never, we never talked hip hop. Oh, cool. Did you notice when you watched it that every time they played it when she was in her car, she was playing some super hardcore hip hop? Mm -hmm. Yes. That was that was so dope to me. Like, why is this country girl in a hip hop that? That was dope. Yeah, I love the details. Now, like, now we, I mentioned when we met. I first interviewed you before Power came out. And then, like season two, you became you became Tommy. People know you as Tommy. Yeah. Well, they also started writing for me. Season one, they wrote for the ghost character primarily, and I, I did what I knew, I did what I knew I had to do. You know what I mean? I, I developed the character in a way of like I found the humor in the character. I found the humanity in the character. Where. It, where it was a character, I mean, giving Courtney all the credit for creating the character, but I worked within those boundaries to make the character that I wanted, and then they started writing for the character. So then it became more of, you know, Tommy and Ghost uh, for season two. And then once it was, once that was it, man, it was just Tommy. You're Tommy, and, and when you're, and that's, I mean, what a compliment to be embraced by the culture and be accepted. Um, that's a yeah. huge honor. So it's like, you know, I mean, I always say, call me Joseph, call me Tommy, call me Frank, just call me. But I, I say that to say that I feel like by, by now, like where we're at now, end of season six, you've earned your name. And it's crazy to figure how you earned the, the right to be called Joseph again. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like you did so good a job that do people, they, most people call you Tommy, but they call you Joseph. I was, when I'm, it's funny, when I'm in Europe, people call me Joseph all the time. Oh, Joseph Sakura, or you know, even France or Italy, like they were always calling me Joseph Sakura. I'd say 90% Joseph, 10% Tommy. In, in the States, in uh, America, New York, in New York, it's 99% Tommy. Yeah. And everywhere else is probably 90% Tommy, 10% Joseph. Oh, or like, cool. oh, 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 you're the, uh, you're the white boy from that thing. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so having you know, roots in Chicago, and then having a main character that everyone loves in New York. Are you, Joseph, split between Chicago pizza and New York pizza? Well, having lived in New York for m almost half of my life, um, I mean, I, I, I always love my place. Phil's Pizza Doro is, was my neighborhood place um, on Milwaukee and Austin in Chicago uh, on the Northwest side. That was like my pie. But what people don't get is that we had thin crust pie. If you grew up in the city, you rarely ate deep dish, rarely. Mm -hmm. Like you ate it at a quinceanera or a graduation or something like that. You never just like, it wasn't like, hey, it's pizza day. Like, let's order a, a yeah. deep dish. You got a, a thin crust pie. We call, you know, and then it's cut into squares, family style, pub style, whatever. And I like that. But then there's, you know, tons of great pizza places in New York. It's just like, I just like pizza. My man, Premier yeah. Pete and me, we always go back and forth. He calls deep dish pizza uh, pizza soup. I know we had that conversation. Which is yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what have you been watching since since this lockdown? Have you been engaging in a little bit of television? Have you been reading? Have you been writing? Like, have you been watching TV? Yeah, I've been um, I've been doing a little bit of, of everything. Um, I got the rights to a book. Uh, my writing partner and I are going to be uh, developing a movie about the first double jeopardy trial ever in American history. Um, a book by my uh, guy that I call my friend now, uh, a guy named Rick Kogan, who's uh, definitely Chicago famous, that's for sure. Uh, and it's uh, a really interesting story. So um, I'm going to make that movie. And uh, hope, you know, not hopefully, there's going to be the Tommy spinoff. Um, so that's cool. The writers are, are developing that story and trying to get Tommy out to Los Angeles. Um, I'm trying to memorize one of Shakespeare's sonnets every week. Um, I'm to, I'm to, this week is uh, Sonnet 69, um, and it's tough, man. Shakespeare's tough. I'm just trying not to be so rusty. And then I am uh, writing, uh, developing a, 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 I already wrote a pilot with my writing partner um, about uh, 
the, these two guys who ran Chicago in the 1890s all the way up into the 1940s called uh, Hinky Dink Mike Kinna and Bathhouse John Coughlin, the alderman of the first ward of Chicago. And then I'm also doing a documentary about the history of Chicago it's from conception, really, in the 1790s by um, Jean-Baptiste Pointe de Sable, who was considered Chicago's first resident, who was actually, um, I would say, African-American, but he's not. I mean, he was, he was half, they, a lot of different stories, half Haitian, half uh, French, um, Canadian, um, but a real tough guy. But from, from the inception in, in 1790 all the way to present day, an eight part series uh, oh, that wow. will be a really cool documentary. So I'm, I'm keeping myself busy, but uh, it's tough work. I know, I know, it sounds cool. Since you brought it up, Tommy, the show, um, how exciting is that for you? Because that'll be your first series where you carry the majority of the weight. Yeah, I'm, I, this will be, um, this will be definitely, uh, you know, the Tommy show and uh, the world through this guy's eyes. And it's going to be starting off uh, as we saw at the end of power, um, Tommy leaving with nothing. Uh, everybody's dead. And, um, and his mother is dead to him. So, you know, he's he's starting with nothing. I think this is a real opportunity to, uh, to we have the comfortability of knowing Tommy and who he is, but we have the shell of a man. So we'll watch the shell of Tommy get filled up with uh, new situations. And we know that this was a show about hustling and selling drugs. And by the end of it, there was only one dude left who wanted to hustle and sell drugs. And um, we're gonna watch, watch this guy who's gonna become a fish out of water because we'll watch this New Yorker in somewhere else. So it's gonna, be, um, it's gonna be a challenge to tackle this world and all these new situations. But it's gonna be really exciting too because Tommy's always been the catalyst for the show. He's always been the engine for the show. So I think that we're going to be able to get really deep inside his mind. And I think that's pretty exciting. What is your heart telling you about it? Like, what is your inside, your inner core telling you about this situation? Because I oh, know the butterfly's got to be crazy. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm just so excited. I think that we got a great writing team gathered up together, um, a great showrunner. Um, I'm excited about, I'm excited because it's going to be a whole cast. And I think it's going to be primarily a whole cast of unknown actors who have been in this business for forever. I think it's, it's, I think it's exciting. I think that it'll be a little bit more gritty and grimy, a little bit more, you know, maybe more like, like the wire, way less polished. Um, we're going to have to watch, we're going to have to watch a man's attempt to make an empire from nothing other than his uh, sweat and his hard work. You know, Tommy's, a, Tommy's the working man's hero. You know what I mean? He's yes. the blue collar hero. Yes. What is it like walking in the doors of stars, knowing that your show, the network is pretty much built on the back of a show that you were a major part of? Uh, you know, it feels like, again, it's just an honor. It's an honor to, it's an honor to work under 50 um, and Courtney. And 50 has always been so accessible. And let me look at his incredible success not only at Stars, but now at ABC, having the number one show with Poor Life, which is really good. Have you been watching it? I have not watched it yet, but my boy's good. It, but I haven't watched it yet. It's good, it's good. And Fifth is really good on it too. When yeah. he comes in his big caches, it, it's really good. It's a, it's a quality show and, and fun. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty humble guy. I know that I'm a cog in the machine. I, it's, I'm honored and grateful to be part of it. So I mainly try to give love. Okay, you give love. In order, in order to get love, you got to give it. Once you give it, you give it, get it back again. Then once you get it back again, you give it away. That's what Russell Simmons right. said. To me. Yeah, like a big, big giant circle. Yeah, I, I believe I believe in that that Buddhist method of his. Yes. Yeah, super good. Now I don't want to keep you too long. I just want to leave off with a couple of uh, questions about movies because I'm a huge movie head. Other than like uh, the graffiti movie, which movie really, really like affected and like changed your life? Yeah, I, I love films too. And there's so, I mean, down to like the most commercial, crazy movies that were like literally like Ghostbusters. I loved Ghostbusters so much that I was just like, you can be entertained and have fun and have kind of this deep message of love and connection. At, you know, something that is, is something like that. And you know, you know what a movie was so big that I loved so much was Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Mm. Because... And a lot of that was inf actually influenced the Tommy character in some ways that it's serious. This is like your life is on the line. 
but it's still hilarious. There's so yeah. many funny parts about it because that's actually a little bit more reflective of life. So that was a, a big movie to me. Um, God, so many films. I love documentaries. I've gotten so into documentaries uh, lately too. Anything PBS, I'm, I'm all over it. So, I mean, I don't even, I'm trying to think of like, a, you know what's a huge movie to me too was He Got Game. Really? Yeah, I just thought that Denzel in that like was like, Next level, and, and, like, and and the, the hitting the guy in the throat with this, I never forget that. I always think <laughs> about that movie, just jamming the guy in the throat with this. But it was because it because it was tough, and because it was uh, Denzel, I think was on an underestimated performance where he allowed himself to 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 be viewed like that. You know what I mean? He didn't yeah. have to be. He didn't have to have that a full redemptive character in the end. He he allowed people to see of a multi-flawed character until the end of the movie and and say that's life yeah sorry i think i think denzel and spike the way they work together is just magical it, it's it's a version of like de niro and, and Scor pacino and scorsese you know what i mean the way denzel works with spike those two make magic together all the time and i would love to see them get together one more time before it's all said and done you know word up who would be your dream cast to like work with and sit sit and you know act beside? So many people. Michael Shannon is my favorite actor. Yeah, um, I, I interviewed him once. Yeah, and, um, yeah, and I asked him because you know he has such a good way of just like portraying evil and fear. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, how do you how do you do that? How do you just bring this convincibility of like evilness? And he goes, I have a well in the back of my house and I pull it down lava and I swallow it. Like he just gave me this great answer, which is so dope. But Mike he's, he's a pretty creative he's, guy. He, I actually saw Mike Shannon, he was one of the first actors I saw perform that I remember to just, it changed my life. I was 14 years old and he was doing a play called Killer Joe by Tracy Letts. Tracy Letts is also one of the most brilliant actors in America um, and one of the best playwrights, easy. Um, and uh, he was doing Killer Joe at the n at the next theater in Evanston, and I he was a 16 year old playing a 20 year old because he was still wow. that tall. And uh, he, Chris Smith was the character. And I, after I saw that show, I was just like, I, I you know, because I was I wanted to be an actor. I had done some things since I was 11, and now I'm 14. I'm thinking, you know, this has been a fun thing. I'm good at it. And then after I saw Mike Shannon do Killer Joe, I uh, I was like, I have to. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I know it. And in fact, I did the West Coast premiere of that same play, playing that character. Nice. Um, yeah. I, but Mike, Mike Shannon, I've seen him in a ton of shows that influenced my life. Mojo. Um, he was great in that. And Bug. And it's, he's just, he's an exceptional actor who's the most committed actor I've ever met in my life. I've never met anybody more committed than Mike Shannon and more committed to the craft of acting. He's a, he's a purist. He's in it to find the truth, and um, um, I, that's I aspire to be that dedicated. Yeah, you're, you're on that road. You'll definitely hit it. You're getting more and more opportunities. I can't wait to see you, you know, be, you know, and as great as this crazy is going to sound, come here for you to be better than him, you know what I mean? Because you're on the road, to be, <laughs> I think you're on the road to be phenomenal, and Mike is top tier. Super underrated, I think, but top mm -hmm. tier. Everything he's in, I, I go see. 99 Homes was a brilliant movie. I just loved it. Yeah, I see I see everything that he's in, too. It's a, it'd be a waste not to. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to keep you too long, man. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me. I appreciate you. What's next? Zilla, my guy. What's next my is, guy. Another, is another thing from this, probably the same place in my house. Um, <laughs> what's, literally, what's next is, you know what's funny, and I've said this in my Instagram stories, that... Uh, uh, I've auditioned for a ton of stuff. And I just haven't booked anything. And people are like, aren't offers coming to you? I'm like, man, this is a tough business, you know? And a lot of times people don't, you know, want an offer only. And there's times when I read something, I'm like, you, you could offer me that. You can watch me do that. Yeah. And you could give me that role. But a lot of the times when it's, uh, you know, there's stuff that maybe people haven't seen me do. I'm like, I'll audition. I want to be the right guy for the role. I want it to be the right project too. So, um, you know, I'm just hustling out there. I'm just still moving. Do do you feel you'll have to go and do some really dark, out of the box things in order for people to uh, separate you from Tommy? 
I don't know, man. I don't care. I don't ever think about it like that. I just, I just, because I think because I come from the theater, I've, I've had the opportunity in my life to play such a plethora of characters already. Yeah. That it's like, I, I, I just never think about it like that. And there are people like, oh, you're going to get typecast. I'm like, oh, maybe, but you know, I, I've done enough things in my career right now. Whereas if uh, you watched, I mean, if you watched The Heart She Holler, which was on Adult Swim, it was, it was me and Amy Sedaris and, um, uh, Pat Oswald and Heather Lawless. Um, it, it, you'd, you'd see a totally different side of me too. So it's like, I've done a ton of different stuff that um, yeah. I'm out of, uh, but I'm, so I'm, I just, I just know that it'll come again, you know, and I just you're have to so, kind of stay calm. You're so good at it that people don't even realize you've been in as many things as you've been in. Like you've That's been in so many things that people saw, they have no clue that you have been in. Yeah, True Detective always comes back up when that's the most shocking for people oftentimes was like, there was like, that was you and True Detective. I'm like, yeah, man. And you know, Carrie Fuganaka, I got to give love uh, even above and beyond because I didn't audition for that role. I auditioned for another role in it. And, and uh, he, Carrie was like, yeah, how about for this role? We'll do if you know, like, well, and I was like, that's, that takes a lot of creativity to have that kind of foresight to, to do yeah. that. So that's another thing that makes him such a great actor. I mean, such a great director. He's brilliant. I I, I yeah. think he's super cool. He's also a hip hop head too. Yeah. Um, so super cool. I'm excited to see where you go. Your projects that you're working on shows vision. So I'm I'm you know I'm I'm geeked to see where that lands and how it comes about. Who knows when we'll be working together, man? That'll be fun too. Soon, soon. I got a bunch of stuff uh, written and um, a bunch of ideas coming. Really excited, and I think I, the ideas that I'm creating out the box and original enough to get made, but the same enough to get made too. You know what I mean? Somebody said he was, he on prison break. Yeah, I was on prison break. Nice. Oh, that's right. Nice. Uh, nice amongst nice. other things. Amongst All right, man. Thanks. Zilla. Thank you, boss. Talk to you soon. All right. I'll talk to you later. See ya. Peace.